Did you know Cleveland was one of the greats in the garment industry? Back in the day, workers wielded needles that knitted and sewed women's and men's wear for our area and for way beyond. A new book and exhibit tells the terrific tale of attire, and both are titled A Stitch in Time. Author Sean Martin is here to tell us more. Sean is also the associate curator for the Jewish history at the Western Reserve Historical Society, where the exhibit is actually being held. So welcome to the show. Um, so, you know, how big of an industry really are we talking about? How did it impact in Cleveland? It was a significant industry here in the city. Uh, from about the 1890s to the 1940s, about 7% of the population, the working population here in town, was employed in the garment industry. And so that's a, a pretty significant it number. It really is, yeah. So it's an, a national center of, of this industry across the country. Huh? Yes, I, I, I'd say we were. And I would say its heyday here in the area was probably the, the post-war period when older established firms were still up and running and, and newer firms were even being founded in the 40s and 50s. Okay, so tell us about some of the firms and factories. Uh, well, workers were employed at both what we would say were cut and sew firms and knitting mills. And I got into this project through uh, two gentlemen uh, involved with the knitting mills, Mark Frisch of Frisch Knitting Mills and Gary Rand of Ohio Knitting Mills. And they wanted to learn more about the industry in its entirety and about their family's involvement as well. Okay. Um, what are the other names of some of them? Um, we also uh, have lots of information about some of the uh, better known firms, Joseph and Feist, Richmond Brothers in menswear, uh, Bobby Brooks and Dalton in women's wear, mm -hmm. uh, workwear and in industrial clothing, a very important firm. So what about the workers in this kind of industry? Uh, the workers really uh, reflected the, the, the immigrant base that came to Cleveland uh, in the uh, late 19th and early 20th century. So they were uh, Croatian, Serbian, Slovenian, Italian, uh, Polish, Ukrainian, etc. Um, and th they came here, found work in the garment industry, uh, and Americanized. Um, and actually, many of the factories here were known for some of the progressive programs and policies that helped immigrants Americanize and, and become used to living here. That's, that's important. We don't want them to be sweatshops, although I, I guess some were. Well, so certainly. Uh, conditions in some of the factories uh, were, were not the best, uh, and, and there was the need for, the, for organization of the workers and the union movement. Um, some of the policies were very paternalistic and introduced sports teams, orchestras, education courses, English classes, uh, all of them to, to help them uh, adapt to the culture here. Uh, unions come in uh, definitively here in the area by the mid-1930s. Okay. So a lot of these factories, though, are gone now. They still left an impact, however. Yes, most definitely. Um, most definitely. Uh, we still see some uh, abandoned factories lining the highways, lining the streets. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, the legacy is that the workers were able to establish themselves. The manufacturers were able to become leaders in the community, to become philanthropists in the community, and to, to be real leaders here in the city. Okay, and all of this is in the book and in the exhibit. So how do we, when, how do we see those things and get the book? So, so the exhibit uh, really does reflect the book, a survey of the industry. Uh, and the exhibit uh, has been open since November 6th at the Historical Society. And I encourage you to come. The book is available at the Historical Society and at local booksellers. All right, it sounds like a very interesting topic. Cleveland wasn't just so-so in the sewing business. We were one of the leaders in the growing garment industry. To learn more about this thread of our area's history, attend the exhibit or purchase Sean's book. No doubt you'll be proud of our productive past. For more information, call the Western Reserve Historical Society at 216-721-5722 or visit www.wrhs.org.